Okay, so here we have question number eight from C34, October 2018, International A level, and question eight, part two. Now, part A of part two asks us to use the substitution x equals sec theta to show that the integral between the limits of one and two of the square root of one minus one of x squared with respect to x can be written as the integral between the limits of zero and pi over three of tan squared d theta, tan squared theta d theta. So basically, what they want to do, us to do is, is use substitution to transform this into that. Okay, use the substitution x equals sec theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, let's consider this part as being your y, the square root of 1 minus 1 of x squared. So what we have here is the integral of y with respect to x. Okay, if I wanted to write it in, in terms of a substitution in terms of theta, what I have to do is I'm going to write, rewrite this as y dx d theta d theta. This is the same thing as the, the integral of y dx. Okay, these cancel out basically. So if I can follow this format, it should give me this here. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do is, I know that x equals sec theta. So I, x is equal to sec theta. Now, I know that dx d theta, if I differentiate this with respect to theta, I'm going to get sec theta tan theta and that's something you'll see in your formula book okay that's something you'll see in your formula book and you could even derive that yourself if you want to by using the fact that the x is equal to 1 over cosine theta and then you could use the reverse of the chain rule so you have x equals cosine theta to the power so sorry the, the chain rule to the power minus 1 so you're going to have dx d theta is going to be so you take this as it is, you have minus 1 times cosine theta, take 1 from the power. So you're going to have the power of minus 2 times the differential of cosine theta, which is um, the, the differential is minus sine theta. So you end up with basically minus and a minus is plus. You end up with 1 over cosine squared theta times sine theta, okay, um, which is the same as. Um, 1 over cosine theta times sine theta over the cosine of cosine of theta which is sec theta tan theta sec theta tan theta okay, you don't need to actually go into that but that's just to show you um, that you can um, basically derive it but you don't need to derive it because this is actually one of the results that you'll find in your formula booklet if you look at the differentials you'll see um, a sec theta gives you sec theta tan theta as a differential. Anyway, so the dx d theta part now, I can replace that with sec theta times tan theta. Now I've got to think about how am I going to replace the y, because basically what I want to have in the end is everything in terms of theta, no x's and y's in there. So I want to replace this y, which is 1 minus 1 over x squared, I want to replace this with something in terms of theta and again we can use the fact that x equals sec theta to do so so y is equal to the square root of 1 minus 1 over now instead of x i can write sec theta that will become sec squared theta now <clears throat> 1 over sec squared theta is the same as cosine squared theta so the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta okay and we know from our identity the, one of the main identities we've learned is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. That means 1 minus cosine squared theta is the same as sine squared theta. So this becomes the square root of sine squared theta, which of course is sine theta. Square root of something squared okay, gives it itself. So now, the y I can simply replace it with sine theta, and the, the x d theta I can replace it with sec theta tan theta. So I've, I've, I've you know, fulfilled my objective. The only thing left for us to do now is to change the limits or to show that the limits become these limits. So that we know when basically x is sec theta. So 2 is equal to sec theta. So when sec theta is equal to 2, okay, that's the same as saying cosine theta is equal to a half. Okay, because it's a reciprocal. So that means theta is equal to, well, 60 degrees, which is pi over 3. And when sec theta 
is equal to 1. So we can say cosine theta is also equal to 1. It's reciprocal. So cosine theta equals 1 when theta is 0 degrees. So we can show, we've shown that how the limits become what they are. So we can now just go ahead and rewrite this in the way they want us to write it. So we're going to have here, um, the, the original was 1, 2. Now it's become 0 pi over 3. Our y is sine theta. Our dx d theta is sec theta than theta. So we're almost there now. We have to just show how this becomes tan squared theta. So basically, you can leave that. You've got pi over 3, and you've got 0. So you've got sine theta. Now, let's rewrite sec theta as 1 over cosine theta. And then you've got your tan theta, and you've got your d theta. You have to be clear to show your steps carefully here, because they've already told you what it, it, it should look like. So you have to make sure you show your steps clearly. Okay, so now we know that sine theta over cosine theta is tan theta. So I guess we can just go ahead and straight away say this is like tan theta multiplied by tan theta with respect to theta, 0 and pi over 3. So therefore we get the integral between 0 and pi over 3 of tan squared theta d theta. Okay, so that's how we've shown what we had to show. Okay, so that's part A of part 2, question 8. Now we're going to go on to the second part. Okay, it says, hence find the exact value of the integral of this with respect to x. So we already shown, and they already told us that this can be rewritten in this form, tan squared theta d theta. Now, we do not have an integral for tan squared theta okay we do not have an integral for tan squared theta but we do have an integral for um, sex squared theta okay the differential of tan theta is sex squared theta that means the integral of sex squared theta is tan theta okay so if i can rewrite this in terms of sex squared theta then i'll be able to integrate this so we have the identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one I want to write it in terms of tan squared theta and sec squared theta. So if I divide by cosine squared theta, this is for you in case you forget your identities. Most of you should remember them, but this is what happens if you forget your identities. You can just use a basic one. So this will be tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. So I can replace the tan squared theta with sec squared theta minus 1. And then I can integrate that. Because I know the integral of sec squared theta, and I know, I know the integral of 1. So this will be sec squared theta minus 1 integrated with respect to theta. And then once I start integrating, it's a 0 here, I have to get rid of the integral sign. Sec squared theta becomes tan theta. Minus 1 becomes minus theta. We don't need to put plus c because it's a definite integral. And we can just substitute those values in now. So you end up with tan of pi over 3 minus pi over 3. Okay, do I need to put the 0 in there? Tan, zero, tan of 0 is 0. And uh, we don't need to, to worry about the 0 part in this particular case. If it had a cosine in there, you would. You would worry about it because cosine of theta is 1. So don't just think because there's a 0 there, you ignore it every time. You do, in some cases, have to put that in there because it gives you something. So now... The tan of pi over 3, that's the tan of 60 degrees. 60, that's 2, that's 1, that's root 3. You can use your calculator for this, but tan of pi over 3 is root 3. That's root 3 minus pi over 3, just in case you don't believe me. Let's just confirm. Now we're going to be in radian mode here. Okay, so tan of pi over 3, in case you didn't believe me, as I said, so you've got tan of pi over 3. We're in radian mode. Yes, we are. So tan of pi over 3. It should give us root 3. And it does. Okay? So you get root 3 minus pi over 3 as our answer. Now let's check how they ask us to express the answer. It says find the exact value of. So you must leave it in terms of pi and the square roots. So you don't you don't round it to 3SF or anything like that. So there's our answer. Pi minus root 3. Pi, 
So root 3 minus pi over 3. Let me write it neater. It's a bit messy there. So you've got root 3 minus pi over 3. That's fine as your answer. Okay, if you wanted to, you could even write it as 3 root 3 minus pi all over 3. But that's fine. Both of them are perfectly fine. Those are exact answers there. And there we have that question done.